Hey guys, my name is Frank and I'm going to do a little walkthrough of my fixed step game loop that I wrote in JavaScript here. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple projects soon where I program a little game and I want to go through the game code step by step and I don't really want to focus on this game loop too hard here. I'm just going to throw it in there and then just focus on the actual code of the game and kind of leave this kind of out because it's a little complicated, it's a little confusing. So I suggest that if you want a really good in-depth explanation of game loops or fixed time step game loops, you go online and look up an article because they can explain it a lot better than I can. It's actually pretty complicated so I'm just going to go over a couple of things that I used in this implementation of fixed step game loop that are pretty useful, especially well, only really if you're using HTML and JavaScript to make your games. So, the number one thing that I did here to improve this version of my game loop was use request animation frame. And the reason that's really good is because I'm going to go over here to my example program. The reason that's good is because request animation frame only fires events when your browser window is ready to draw. So, if your browser window isn't ready to draw, why would you want to draw anything? And if you use set timeout or set interval, those are going to execute as soon as a specific number of milliseconds is reached, and they'll try to execute your code when the screen isn't even ready to draw. So you want to use request animation frame because it'll make things really, really smooth when you know smoothness is important, like in a game scenario. So the next thing that request animation frame does that's really useful is kind of pause your game for you and to give an example of that I just I want you to look at these numbers right here this is the total number of updates and the total number of redraws right now they're at 3,000 actually that total number of redraws was just under 3,000 when I minimized my window so when I come back and open up that window what's gonna happen is my number of updates is gonna be big and my number of redraws is gonna be the same it's gonna be just under 3,000 the reason for that is because request animation frame knows that when your window is minimized or out of focus, you're not looking at the screen and it shouldn't redraw because say you're on your phone, you get a call, you minimize your, your game or whatever you're doing that uses request animation frame and you don't want to have your application drawing to a screen that the user can't even see. It just wastes battery. So this handles that for you by shutting itself off whenever the screen is minimized. So now I'm going to open up the screen and you can see 3000. It just turned over to 3000 and my total number of updates is still way up there. And that's actually a little bit of a problem. I'm going to get into how to fix that a little bit later. That was uh, a little bit of a problem for me at first, but I got a way to fix that. So here we go. The next thing that I want to show you is this little updated flag now the updated flag all it is is what it kind of sounds like it just says whether or not you updated on this cycle of your game loop so say when you start your game loop let's kind of imagine you hit a, a stopwatch whenever you call start on your game loop accumulated time is going to keep track of the amount of time that's passed since the last time your loop executed and the very current execution so say your game is running at 60 frames per second that is about 16.7 millisecond time chunks so let's say your accumulated time is equal to 40 milliseconds that 16.7 milliseconds fits into that twice you're gonna update your game two times right here now if you update your game, you want to set updated to be true so you know that your game scene has actually changed and then you could render that new scene. Say your accumulated time is less than 16.7 milliseconds, say it's 10 milliseconds, you had a short game cycle, you're not going to update and your updated flag is going to be false so you don't render the screen. And you don't want to render the screen because it looks exactly the same as it did the last time you rendered it. So why would you want to render the same screen twice? So it's really handy to have a little updated flag or some kind of flag that tells you whether or not your logic has updated. This way you know whether or not you want to render 
to your screen or not. So now I'm gonna go and talk about that thing I mentioned where here we can see I have 14,000 updates and only 11,000 redraws. Well, that's because request animation frame pauses whenever your screen is minimized. That means you're not updating either. All those updates occur when you open up your screen. So I had about, what is that, 3,000 updates occur so far, those two or three times I reopen my screen. That Let's just say it's 1,000 updates at a time. If your user opens up your app and the app updates a thousand times, that's gonna bog down their system a little bit. So in order to stop that, what we do is we just come in here and we have this code right here. What this does is it just says if the amount of time that's passed since the last time your game executed or the last time your loop ran, which is right before you close the window, is greater than a certain amount of milliseconds, let's just say 300 because that's pretty low. That will that will mean your game will update more than 10 times. You don't really want to perform 10 updates. Maybe you do, but if your game uses a lot of CPU, then you don't because you don't want to bog down that computer. So if your accumulated time is greater than 300, you just set that accumulated time to equal one time step, and then you'll only update one time. So let's see how adding this code affects our rendered page here. Now we can see these are kind of neck and neck. We got 300, 400, we're gonna stop it at 500 and I'm gonna minimize the window and I'm gonna wait. And now the update should be at about, I don't know, seven, 800, right? Well, now that I put that line in, they're not, they stay neck and neck. Your game actually pauses. And in the event that your code is running really slow because you're running it on a slow device or maybe you just accidentally left an infinite loop open somewhere. This little bit right here will ensure that you're not gonna run your update function, you know, a thousand, two thousand, a hundred thousand times. You don't wanna do that. So make sure you have this little safety mechanism in here to uh, keep your user safe from overloads. And anyway, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's the code right here. I mean. The only other thing I can think to mention is that I have render and update function references and in my actual application, all you do is you define the render function on the loop object. I constructed my loop right here, my fixed step loop. I put it in an object called loop, initialize it at 60 frames a second. And then you just define your render function and your update function. So you wanna draw something on your game loop, you put it in this function. You wanna update something, you put it in this function. Really simple to use. All you need to do to use this fixed step game loop is define a loop with a time step and define the render and the update function. So it's really easy to use. And that's it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it helps you to make your own game loop uh, once again, I suggest you go out there and look up some articles on the on the topic. And if you guys do use the code and modify it and make it better, please hit me up and and you know show me what you did because I want to improve this code definitely. I'm gonna be posting a link to it. Um, the code will be on my GitHub page so you can see the full source. This way you don't have to pick through the video if you're gonna use this. Cause I hate YouTube videos for code reviews because it's like I gotta pause just to you know kind of see the block of code I want to see and it's a little tedious it's, it's a lot easier to just go online and copy and paste code if, if you want to test it out or use it in your own project so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video like subscribe do what you want um, have a good one